good morning uh, thank you very much uh, today uh, the unusual case of myeloma uh, discussion uh, should be carried out with uh, dr harindra karnatilaka but uh, he is unable to attend the session uh, so i have to continue um, so i will uh, present the history now uh, this is from harindra's ward this patient 68 year old male was attending medical clinic for hypertension for a longer period maybe 2 to 2 to 3 years and the doctors noticed that he is developing mild cytopenia hemoglobin 9.8 wbc 3919 and platelets 1300 300 Uh, 139,000. So the general and systemic examination was uh, normal. So uh, then the patient was admitted to the ward and investigations were done. So uh, somebody has uh, anyway very keenly uh, suspected on multiple myeloma with above counts and following investigations were done. The blood picture shows pancytopenia. but there was no rouleau formation uh, no abnormal cells serum protein electrophoresis was normal uh, skeletal survey was normal urine electrophoresis showed a tiny monoclonal band and the serum calcium was normal 2.13 the creatinine was slightly high 2.2 millimoles per liter uh, further work up showed ldh of 3, 361 ultrasound scan was normal 2d echo was negative and the viral screen was negative immunofixation study was done and it showed igg kappa monoclonal proteins then the serum free light chain assay was performed because sp is normal and it was 895.8 Uh, the, and that was kappa La lambda light chains were normal 7.44 kappa lambda ratio was 120.4 albumin also normal 43 and beta 2 microglobulin was very high so you can see only few investigations were normal the usual myeloma investigations were negative in this patient so the final diagnosis was light chain myeloma with elevated serum creatinine and mild anemia so treatment was started for multiple myeloma with bortezomib uh, cyclophosphamide and dexamethasone now about plasma cell disorders this is a clonal proliferation of plasma cells presents in the serum or urine of monoclonal protein that is m protein when the complete molecule is there we call it para protein when the light chain is there we call it benz jones protein or both can be there so uh, the plasma cell disorders are multiple myeloma mgas that is monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance solitary plasmacytoma poiom syndrome amyloidosis in the picture you can see uh, amyloidosis in this slide the pinkish material pushing the hemopoietic elements out and it's spreading involving the bone marrow area amyloidosis uh, then about multiple myeloma about 5500 cases per year diagnosed in uk actually and the peak age is 69 to 70 years so at this age we must uh, screen them for myeloma so the basic types are mgas small dairy myeloma multiple myeloma and plasma cytoma so you can see in this picture the plasma cells these are abnormal morphologically with eccentric nucleus and abundant bluish cytoplasm that is because of the immunoglobulin uh, secretion the cytoplasm is blue uh, there are many plasma cells here multi nucleated one and so on so there are normal hemopoietic cells also we have to uh, i uh, recognize them this is a special cell the myeloma flame cell which occurs in iga secreting myeloma this is a normal plasma cell you can see the halo uh, here due to golgi apparatus 
So in the abnormal ones, usually halo has disappeared. So now in the ward, when to suspect multiple myeloma, when you see a patient, if it is a straightforward case, patient will have back pain, very high ESR, and you can uh, straight away uh, think of multiple myeloma. But there are many unusual presentations, sometimes persistent bone pain for longer than four to six weeks with no obvious trigger, neuropathic symptoms, recurrent infections, lethargy, uh, concerning unexplained pains, fatigue, and the fever, sweats, symptoms of hypercalcemia, anemia, gastrointestinal disturbances, or weight loss, organomegaly, skin changes, such unusual presentations, you have to think of unusual multiple myeloma. So the full blood count, blood picture, serum creatinine, serum electrolytes, serum calcium, serum protein electrophoresis, urine protein electrophoresis, and x-ray. So other imaging should be done as basic uh, uh, diagnostic investigations in the ward. All the other sophisticated investigations we should do after diagnosis of the myeloma. So indication for bone marrow, when you have seen a paraprotein or elevated serum-free light chain, particularly when it's associated with anemia or renal impairment, hypercalcemia, immunoparesis, lytic bone lesions more than one or uh, focal lesions on whole body imaging or with the recurrent infections, you can ask for a bone marrow. Now, diagnosis of symptomatic myeloma. Now, we have to uh, consider the criteria of diagnosis of myeloma because some need no need of treatment, but symptomatic myeloma, we should go for treatment. To diagnose these, the criteria are simple as that. Uh, monoclonal plasma cells should be more than 10% in the bone marrow uh, or trephine biopsy. With that, there should be CRAB criteria. Unless CRAB criteria, we should not go for treatment. These are the myeloma-related organ or tissue injury. The C stands for hypercalcemia. That should be more than 2.75. Uh, and the R stands for renal impairment. Uh, creatinine should be 177 micromoles per liter. And anemia should be less than 10 milligram and no other causes should be there for this anemia. And the bone lesions in the x-rays, CT, PET, or other imaging, it should be one or more than osteolytic lesions. So uh, then uh, the smoldering asymptomatic myeloma, we should not go for treatment. We can wait without treatment. Absence of treatment requiring myeloma defined events are not there. Those are the CRAB criteria are absent. But the monoclonal serum protein is more than 30 grams per liter. It's a fairly a big M band you can see. But 10 to 60% plasma cells can be there in the bone marrow as well. Still, the CRAB criteria are not there, so we can wait without treating. There are three conditions, however, even without CRAB criteria, we must go for treatment. That is when the plasma cells are more than 60% in the bone marrow, or when the serum-free light chain assay ratio is more than 100, and you have to always, it should be involved uh, serum-free light chain assay. And the bone lesions are more than one on the MRI, even without CRAB criteria, we should uh, seek treatment. Then the MGAS is a paraprotein is less than 30 and the marrow clonal plasma cells are less than 10. In this situation, uh, no evidence of CRAB criteria, we call it monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. So we can wait without treatment, but patient need follow up Every six months, uh, we have to do the CRAB criteria as well as the paraprotein assessment. Urine monoclonal protein also should be 
less than 500 in this case. And we find solitary plasma cytoma of the bone. They are a single bone lytic lesion confirmed to be composed of clonal plasma cells on the biopsy. Always we should go for bone marrow and other criteria investigations to rule out myeloma. Uh, if only plasma cytoma, they can go for radiotherapy. So hematology workup also same as I described the full blood count, platelet count, blood picture, ESR, serum, uh, proteins, albumin, globulin, uh, blood urea, and uric acid we should do. You can see in this picture marked rouleau formation in classic case of myeloma. The Chinese letter arrangement here, the ESR will be definitely more than 100. Uh, rest of the hematology workup also, as I mentioned, 24-hour urine collection to quantification of base zone protein. But in routinely, we don't do this. Uh, we do the spot urine base zones. That's also acceptable. Serum protein electrophoresis, urine protein electrophoresis, immunofixation. The, it's done to identify the subtype of protein with the IgG, IgA, or lambda. We cannot quantify the paraprotein amount by immunofixation. Serum-free light chain assay, then we can do the cytogenetics uh, and the skeletal survey, MRI and calcium. So these are some pictures you come across uh, daily. Uh, this is the electrophoresis strip. This is the uh, M-band. This is albumin. Uh, then alpha-beta chains are here. You can see the M-band, uh, corresponding M-band here. In the urine, this is the uh, corresponding M band, you can see a tiny band. This is immunofixation. To uh, prove clonality, sometimes we have to go for immunofixation, uh, which is very expensive uh, investigation. Right. Then uh, this is a common finding in our clinical practice, a tiny uh, paraprotein band, which is a problem for all of us. A uh, very small amount of paraprotein, sometimes available in the uh, serum protein electrophoresis. Uh, we have done so many uh, bone marrows and we found it's not mostly myeloma, maybe evolving. You have to follow up these patients uh, and we have to screen for PrEP criteria and we can wait and watch. Uh, other investigations to show the prognosis is serum beta-2 microglobulin, albumin, LDH level, and the FISH. So in FISH deletion 13, 17, P13, translocation 414, 1114 are bad prognostic markers. And CRP also, if very high, it's a bad prognostic marker. In the staging, we consider revised IAC staging. For staging, these markers are important. Beta-2 microglobulin, if less than 3.5, stage 1. Albumin, if more than 3.5. And no high-risk cytogenetics in the fish. And normal LDH, then this patient fall onto stage 1. If these are very high, with high-risk cytogenetics, it will be stage three and stage two is in between. So these are the some of the images of immunohistochemistry done in the histopathology lab. Uh, to show clonality, sometimes we have to do the kappa lambda uh, staining immunohistochemistry. Uh, CD138, it, we, it's, a, it's a positive in normal plasma cells as well. So it does not show clonality. It's abnormal as well as normal plasma cells will be positive with CD138. To sometimes when the uh, cells are scanty, we, uh, to count the number of cells, we use this marker. This is a, a routine HNE of a trephine biopsy. So few fit falls I am going to tell you. In clinical practice, sometimes we find patients with normal ESR, no rouleau formation, SPE normal, then we have to think with a light chain myeloma because around 
15 to 18 percent of patients are light chain myelomas. So both uh, kappa and lambda elevate in severe infection. So if you do only these and if the levels are very high, you have to see whether the patient has an infection and we should not do it during severe infections. And a low light chains can be seen in immunosuppression, drugs like steroids and high levels in renal disease. We have to take all these into account. Normal skeletal survey and no obvious CRAB criteria, then we should go for whole body MRI to detect whether there are a tiny uh, invisible uh, bony uh, lesions. Then sometimes during bone marrow aspiration, um, the, it can get clotted. Then we go for clot biopsy, trephine touch smears. Sometimes the trephine biopsy get crushed because of the uh, osteoporosis, then we have to uh, look for, again, clot biopsy, trephine touch for reporting. And very small monoclonal band, I, as I told you earlier, uh, tiny bands are really troubling. We have to observe the patient unless CRAB criteria are there. So the treatment wise, uh, basically, we have to go for these treatments for myeloma patients, laminectomy, supportive care, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and autologous transplantation. So uh, there's no cure for multiple myeloma so far, but we can control the disease with all these treatments. Thank you very much. These are my references.